Please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Iron Man movie thoughts. Okay, so starting with those first couple of scenes, you know, I just love just the way he talks to these military people, you know, and just, he's so relaxed, and, you know, even in that situation, and just the, sort of, just the, the first couple of moments of that, you know, the, the music, and then it cuts inside the Humvee, and you just see these sort of, you know, just, at, at first, you're just seeing these military personnel, and then it cuts to the glass with, you know, and he's sitting there in a suit, you know, and it's just, you know, he's sticking out like a sore thumb, and then he starts talking to them, and all this, you know, and he really makes them relax, and that just really tells it right there, so fast. Why do we like Tony in spite of his, you know, personal defects, you know, personality traits that are, you know, a bit on the rough side, and why, you know... Yeah, what well, you know? What, why is why is he such a lovable character? And he just you know he's making these really tense people in this really tense situation relax, really effectively, you know. And then the thing with you know, and they're about to take the picture, and sort of, you know, the moment he's taking the picture, the other Humvee blows up, you know. And then one by one, this protection, this relaxed scene, just completely devolves into chaos, and I love that you don't see anyone shooting. You never see where the missile was launched from, all this stuff. It is this complete chaos. It is extremely immersive, you know, like I say in the review. You just have these impressions, Tony Stark's impressions. He just, he realizes that someone, you know, that, that the soldiers are being shot, and then he gets out of the car, and it's just like, you know, what else is he gonna do? I mean, obviously it is a bit risky, but also he's not exactly a tactical genius, you know, he is, you know, he's a mechanical genius, not a tactical one. And, I don't know, even if he had gotten in the front seat, could he have even driven away? I think the Humvee in front was blocking, you know, it had, it had been blown up, so he couldn't drive that one away, so, you know, he just goes away and tries to get away from there, and then, you know, the missile lands right in front of him. Irony of ironies, Stark Industries, and it blows up, you know, and then we have, you know, the, you know, the threatening video thing, which they, you know, call back later when it turns out that Obadiah Stane had, you know, asked for him to be captured like that. You know, I do love how the... What's it called? The, you know, that when she asks it to translate, not only does it do a perfect, you know, I don't know, I suppose the translation, the, the, you know, the voice is a bit monotone, but it does have a, you know, very cliched, very stereotypical Middle Eastern accent. I love that. That's, yeah, wow. Not, not just, you know, I don't know, I guess they figured that it would lose too much of the impact if it was just a plain American voice. I don't know. I mean, just, you gotta wonder if it would do that for anything. Like, you know, she wanted to translate a German news clip so it has the, you know, German kind of dialect, accent kind of thing. Yeah, anyway. I guess... The idea with, you know, basically Obadiah wanted them to kill Tony, but when they find out that it's him and he hasn't paid them that much, they want to make sure that he builds them the Jericho first. And they didn't really think that one entirely through with, you know, it allows him to build the Mark I suit. But... 
you know, arguably there is some consequence to that. You know, they do eventually realize it, and, you know, Baldy goes in there and threatens to, you know, put that, you know, that that is really nasty. You know, you're sitting there going, oh, get that away from him. You know, the, what's it, like a, you know, burning hot coal or something, you know, down Yinsel's throat. Jeez, that, ugh. Oh. That's just harsh, man. And, you know, and when Tony moves in, you know, they're like, oh, stand there, you know, stay. <laughs> Good dog. And, you know, about to shoot him. And, yeah, you really have that sense, you know. Now, the... I, I love just the... I, I could go on forever about the introductions to the suits, so I guess I shouldn't do that. I, I do like how they get a ticking clock, you know, the, it's always good to have that tool of, you know, the, the ticking clock in a tense scene, because it, it just has the, you know, it's, it's sort of the, the traditional ticking clock is, you know, what it's named for, it's a bomb, you know, and you have a bomb where you know that that's going to go off in so-and-so time, or you just know that it's already set, and it will go off at some point, but when you just, you know, and in fact some movies have, you know, the actual, like, what's it called, the the timer on there, so you can actually see, oh, that's how much time they have left, you know, and they get great ticking clocks in here, such as the progress bar that has to fill, you know, that's when, you know, that's why Yensel... I hope I don't... Yinsen? Something like that. You know, that's why he sacrifices himself. Well, part of it, you know, he also wanted to, you know, die so he could go see his family. And, you know, it... Yeah, so, you know, the progress bar needs to fill before he's ready. And, you know, before that, he's very vulnerable. So you have that. And you have this near the end... Yeah, when, when he, you know, flies up and the... You know, the old heart thing, you know, the, the old reactor is, you know, not supposed to fly. So, you know, he has that, you know, it's only at 7% now, you know, it, it slowly goes down. You know, that was an excellent uh, addition. And I love how he uses the icing thing to, you know, try to take him out. And then you have him, you know, land and the audience thinks that he's gone, and he thinks that he's gone, so, you know, he takes away the, you know, one of the arms of the suit, and just tosses it, he's like, okay, we're just gonna, and, and he opens the face mask, and then Iron Monger lands, and he just closes the face mask, and I love that, you know, and then he's just, ah, oh, crap, I just threw that away, you know, excellent moment. And how, you know, he destroys Iron Monger's the targeting system so that, you know, it can't, you know, and that's why he doesn't hit, you know, Tony there at the end. I love how the suits are distinctly different, you know, maybe not so much Mark II and Mark III, but very much Mark I, Mark II and Three, and Ironmonger, you know, very different suits. I mean, Ironmonger is like Mark One on steroids, you know, it is a huge suit, you know, and yeah, that just, you know, I love how they got chains in there in the Iron Monger setup scene, because, you know, chains, they're just incredibly, you know, they really create an atmosphere, they really make it creepy, and just, you know, she's there, like, you know, finding all these chains, and she's like, this is where, you know, where it was hanging, and it's gone now. And it, it must be huge. And you just have the, those lights go on in the dark. You know, it's almost like the eyes of a vampire or something like that, you know. And he just lunges at And she gets a huge head start, and he chases her down like it's nothing, you know. Just in two seconds, he's directly behind her, even though she had a huge head start. He had to fight all those agents and that, you know. I like the little hints at S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, I, by the way, I love Jarvis. You know, all the, you know, Paul Bettany as Jarvis. Fantastic, you know, and I love all those little, you know, comments that he makes. Oh, you're right. Why? You're usually so discreet, you know. And, oh, 
obviously, you know, hot rod red, that will, you know, that won't draw any attention to you. Something like that. I don't remember the exact line, but just all that stuff, you know. And in general, the lines. I love when Pepper Potts says, you know, like the reporter is trying to be a bitch at her, you know, and say, ah, oh, you're still doing this for Mr. Stark. And she's like, I do everything Mr. Stark asked me to do, including occasionally taking out the trash. <laughs> awesome. And and I love how they use her as a proxy for us right after she wakes up and it's like, wow, look at this huge apartment, you know, because if Tony Stark's just going through it, we, we need a good establishing shot of it. And again, it's extremely immersive. It's not just a flyby. It's that this character wakes up and she's never been in there before. And she's like, wow, this is huge. And then we're like, wow, that is huge. You know, and she's about to, you know, open the thing to, I guess down to the shop, you know, and Jarvis is like, access denied, you know, the unauthorized access, you know, that is just excellent, because we're like, oh, she can, she's going to touch it, and that's good, oh, oh, yeah, you know, excellent. Now, the, I love the shield build up, you know, it's, just, it's in general, <laughs> let's be honest, this is the best leading into the Avengers movie, movie thus far, and it's also the one with the best scenes building up to, you know, the Avengers movie. And yes, th that is why I chose to review this now. You know, rewatch and review this now. Do Incredible Hulk tomorrow night. You know, it just... You have just Agent Coulson turn up, you know, what, what is it, like 43 minutes into the movie, you know, for the first time. And he just says this long thing. And just at that point, every, you know... Every comic fan is in there going over the letters in their hand. S H I E L D. That's Shield, you know. And she just blows them off, and they're like, "That's Shield," you know. And then like twenty minutes later, he shows back up, and he's like talking to Tony at that point, and he's like, "You know, can we make an appointment?" Oh yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. And each time it's like, you know, you should really change that name. And then near the end, you know, you have that thing of, you know. Uh, what, what is it? So, uh, just, just go with S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, and just perfect, you know, love that. And that, you know, and I like that, it's been a while since I read the, the comics about S.H.I.E.L.D., but it's been a while since I read the comics in general, but as far as I remember, when, you know, in this movie, don't they change what the letters stand for again, and it's like uh, maybe the third iteration of what it's an abbreviation of, you know, or something like that. Acronym of whatever, something. And you have that bit where, you know, she's like, oh, my security clearance isn't working. And of course it isn't because that's Obadiah Stane's secret project, you know. And then it's like, you know, he goes up, you know, let, let me handle this. And he, plugs it on, and she's like, oh, what does that do? Is that going to open it? You may want to stand back a little bit. And you just, you get this sense that S.H.I.E.L.D. is, you know, I mean, for people who do not read the comics, watching that, you do get this sense that these S.H.I.E.L.D. guys mean business. There's, there's something there, you know. That is something that, like, maybe Tony himself would have designed, you know. Yeah. And I love the... Sonic thing that, you know, makes, you know, that paralyzes people, you know, how it just, you know, and, and again, that like, like I said in the review, the, the setup and payoff, you know, you have the Sonic thing, you have the arc reactor, the huge arc reactor at first, and then the, he makes a tiny arc reactor, but the huge the arc reactor is still, you know, used to blow up Obadiah, you know, not only does it fry him, he falls into it, and it blows up, you know, huge explosion, so obviously he's dead by the end of that, you know, that might be a couple of other things, but there, yeah, and the, and the icing, you know, and something like, you know, but, but yeah, so, you know, he uses the, you know, the sonic device thing first to steal the, you know, yeah, the, the suit back 
from the bad guys. It is a little unclear how much time passes there near the end. Excuse me, from when he grabs the suit from them. Excuse me. To when he suddenly has the Iron Monger suit. I mean, that must have taken a while to develop. I love the the bit when he talks to Tony, when he uses the Sonic thing on him as well. And that's the great thing. You know, when you see that, you already know what's happening. You know, you hear the sound and you see the veins thing, and you're like, oh, he's using it on him. And, you know, Pepper Potts was just about to warn him don't trust Obadiah, you know, and we see that he has the little earplugs, you know, and they light up because <laughs> crap lights up today, you know, that's technology for you, you know. It probably gets internet reception as well. And, you know, and he's sitting there. I love that he actually, he has this thing for grabbing it out of his chest. I guess, you know, it wouldn't be quite as romantic as, you know, if, as when Pepper Potts, to t that's actually, that's my favorite scene, by the way. My favorite scene in the whole movie is when Pepper Potts has to replace the thing because, you know, just the, the dialogue and the way the scene keeps, you know, you have this thing of, you know, he's saying, you know, just pull up, just don't touch the sides, oh, just, and, you know, okay, just pull it up and just be sure not to pull up the, no, oh, you were supposed to leave that in, okay, okay, just don't, you know, just, just going into cardiac arrest, just... Put the other one in, before, yeah, careful, careful, you know, it's just, I love that whole, and, and the, oh, what is this, oh, icky stuff, you know, and it smells, and, <laughs> whole scene, perfect, you know, and just the, the call at the beginning, you know, how big are your hands, you know, <laughs> just, by the way, that show she was watching about the, you know, oh, sell, 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 and he's, you know, breaking stuff, that's a real show? I mean, that's that's what I get from the IMDb, you know, thing that it actually, you know, people watch that? People take that guy seriously for stock market advice? Wow. Anyway, you know, you have the, but, but yeah, so, you know, I guess it wouldn't be, you know, quite the same if Obadiah as well, you know, just got it out of his chest like that. So no, he has this little grabby thing that goes in for it, you know. What I love is that he must have had that specially designed. And it he he's never gonna be able to use that for anything else. Well, you know, obviously not because he's dead now, but it, he made that just for that one thing, you know. I mean at least the the Sonic thing, I mean he says it himself, that has a lot of uses, you know. I mean you're in a store you know, there's a ton of customers in line in front of you, you're like, I don't have time for this, you know. So, anyway, just, yeah, I, I love that he had that crafted, just so he could pull that thing out of Tony's chest. And, you know, you gotta love that he's saved by the, you know, the, the previous one. And that's only because Pepper Potts was a bit nostalgic, you know, I've been called a lot of things. Nostalgic isn't one of them, you know, and proof that Tony Stark has a heart, you know, and uh, he leaves it because it's a present from her. I love that she, you know, the thing about, you know, uh, um, it's my birthday, so you go, oh, it's your birthday, well, it seems like it was just, yeah, isn't, isn't it strange how it's you know, fell on the same day as last year, you know, oh, well, you should get yourself something from me, oh, I already did, it was, it was very nice, you know, oh, well, I have good taste, you know, that, that whole thing. And that dress, she does look amazing in that dress. But yeah, and the, yeah, yeah, the whole scene with him crawling over to get that thing, you know, and he tries to grab it, ah, oh, it just won't quite, and he's just like cramping up on the floor, and then Dummy gets, the you know, and gets down there with it, and, you know, puts the thing down, and it's like, <laughs> you know, like, did you want this, boss? Just, I love that. I freaking love it. Because it is just this sort of, it, again, set up and pay off. You know, well, yeah. Anyway, you had seen that thing before, and he had gotten really upset at it. You know, and it has this, you know, and it's also because if you had that, you know, every guy who ever watched this movie wants one of those. Well, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that we want. You know, Gwyneth Paltrow, Leslie Bibb. You know, the, the Iron Man suit. Dummy. And, you know, he's like, he's so used to dummy. So he's like, you know, just 
stop it, you're, you're, you're no help at all, you know, because he, he, it can't keep up with him, you know, and it just, you know, how, when he's building, like, he, I think it's the, the boot thing, the armor boot that he's made, and he's like, oh, okay, go a little bit, you know, okay, just stay where you are, I'm gonna do it myself, you know, and then he starts testing it, and I love the whole thing with it having to, you know, extinguish the fire. And you just have, you know, and I love his first flight as well. You know, how he's just, you know, okay, I don't know, I don't want to fry my car. No, 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 get away from that. Oh, yeah, okay, we're okay, you know, that whole thing. But yeah, just with, you know, he gets, you know, extinguished. And then, you know, okay, you, you just keep filming. And, you, and I love how it looks like a YouTube video. And just, who wouldn't do that? You know, if you're making something like that, I mean, one thing is, you know, you want a documentary, you want to study later, but this is, you want to show that to your friends, you know, you want to see, look what I did, you know, look at how this, how awesome this is, you know. It's, I mean, it's like jackass in sci-fi world, you know. But, yeah, you just have this, you know, he, he's like talking to, and dummy, you, you better not, extinguish me again, unless I'm on fire. I'm telling you, if you do it one more time, I will donate you to a city college, you know, and just the whole thing, and, you know, and, and don't even, don't, don't follow me either, because I, I feel like I'm just gonna spontaneously catch on fire or something, you know, and he just goes for the flight, and, like, falling all the way down, you know, and just, okay, cut power, and he falls all the way down through and lands in the basement with the car, on, on top of one of the cars, and it's been standing there still, because the last thing he said was, you know, in fact, stay completely still. So it's been standing completely still. But then he lands, and it just kind of moves and goes over to him. I love that. I just... Amazing. You know, I just the comedic writing for this film is excellent. You know, and just like, it's stuff that everybody could laugh at. It's just such good timing and such sort of timeless humor kind of it's it's a very sort of human trait even for a robot you know and I love that it sort of has personality you know it's sort of it's this you know antsy you know, nervous little fellow you know this is oh I just want to please my master you know it's it's like a dog actually it's kind of like a dog you know I mean in in a movie made 50 years ago it would be a dog with you know I don't know, something that would it would fetch for his master, you know, it has that sort of thing to it. And I think that's also really important when with something sci-fi that you have something to really ground it, to really make it relatable, you know. I like that there are, you know, very distinct HUDs for Obadiah and for Tony. You know, you have this sort of evil version of the Iron Man HUD with Obadiah, you know, that's very nice. I I like how, you know, one thing you could say about the movie is that Iron Man is almost undefeatable, you know, he doesn't, for a lot of the film, I mean, that's one of the real big problems with this movie, actually, the minimal villain presence, you know, the fight is way too short, I mean, Iron Monger has maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 of screen time, and of that time, him f actually fighting Tony, we're not talking about it, just like chasing each other, actually fighting only a few minutes, and that is way too little, and I really do hope, you know, <sighs> yeah, I mean, I guess the Avengers could maybe help something like that, and, you know, Iron Man 3, maybe, if you've seen Iron Man 2, you know how that one worked out, they actually made even less of a, you know, fight between but at least that one did have a villain throughout it. Anyway. Yeah, so you you have just... You know, you don't have very much of a villain presence. And it's only really when fighting the villain, when fighting Ironmonger, that he has sort of a match. Maybe even, you know... Wait. An equal, maybe even a match, you know. He maybe even has someone who can defeat him here. And he has to be, you know, tricky about it, and, yeah. And I guess it also sort of helps him suddenly that he's smaller than, 
you know, ironmonger. I love how, you know, this is what we do, we're ironmongers, you know, excellent. And I love the, the look of him with the cigar in his mouth. Oh, well, that cried on better, you know, it's excellent. I didn't talk about Rhodey, by the way. The excellent character, also. Really like him. I, I love the, you know, no, I'm not drinking, I'm not drinking. And then it cuts to him, you know, partying with you know, Tony, you know, and drunk off his ass. You know, anyway, the, you know, it's, it's only really at that point that Tony is threatened. And, yeah, and, you know, he gets some, you know, part of what helps him defeat Obadiah is that he is so much smaller and faster than Obadiah, you know, and that he can get up onto his back there, for example. But anyway, yeah, I like how the film, you know, I guess sort of in lieu of that, has sort of these other things that can, because, you know, he can't, there's no way that the, uh, you know, they can defeat him with, you know, so there are times when he's almost overwhelmed. You know, the, excuse me, the Mark I suit, I mean, it would have been less satisfying if he had just completely destroyed that camp because it's like, okay, so this one guy can just take out this entire camp full of armed guys and that's it, you know, that, that would have been unsatisfying. So, you know, by the time it gets to the big machine gun, you know, and they're just, you know, attacking him from all sides, you know, he's overwhelmed, and so his only chance is to, you know, jetpack his, jetpack it out of there. And obviously he would have died from that landing, but, you know. And I like how they find that suit later, and then that becomes the Ironmonger, you know. But yeah, so you have... I am actually a little bit unclear on what exactly Obadiah's actual plan is. I guess he dons the suit because he has to take out Miss Potts. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because she knows about his plan and she has had time to, you know, well, she's with S.H.I.E.L.D. agents for one thing, you know, so if he just sent regular hitmen or soldiers or something, it might, you know, Takes too long, maybe cause too big. I don't know, but I guess he's gonna sell the suit, you know, because that seems to be his business. You know, he just wants to make money, and he doesn't care who he sells it to. So he maybe would sell the suit to someone who'd use it against America, actually, you know. But anyway, the you know, but but yeah. So Tony's almost overwhelmed there, and you know there is. You know, and, and when he has to use the older, you know, arc reactor to get by, that's almost, you know, killing him as well. And that actually against Ironmonger, you know, that's a pretty good idea, certainly. I love just the... I don't know, I, it should sort of take away a lot of the tension from the movie, but I do kind of love when... Iron Man gets attacked by something that would usually just completely stop someone else, you know, dead. But he just gets up from it. You know, I love when he's shot out of the air by a tank. And he just up with the hand and gets up. And he's just like, you know, the helmet is scratched. And that's it, you know. And, just, like, the cannon, you know, from the tank fires again. he's like... Whew. You know, and he turns his back and cool guys don't look at explosions, you know. Walks away and just awesome, you know. And you have the... You know, I, I love how when he lands there in the camp, you know, and that's when you... That's like the second time, again, set up and payoff, you know. Yinsen talks about his village and he mentions it by name. And I, I'm terribly sorry, I don't remember the name right now. Fictionville, Middle East, you know, and then he hears about an attack on Fictionville, Middle East, and it's got stark weapons, and, you know, Leslie Bibb, Christina something, you know, the reporter is like, you know, I thought you had changed, you know, and he's, you know, and it's Obadiah who did it, of course, and, you know, he goes back there, and 
at first you only know about the repulsor rays, you know. So he lands and he just takes out a bunch of them with the repulsor rays. And you kind of, you know, you don't know at that point. I mean, the comic fans know that there are more weapons in the arsenal of Iron Man, but you haven't heard that he's added a ton of weapons to this thing. At that point, you don't know that. You know, also when he uses the flares, you're like, oh, it's, you know, got a missile lock and, oh, he got flares, you know. But yeah, so, you know, when you see all those hostages, he's like, ah, oh, crap. And he just lowers his arms and has that thing. And then, you know, like the scanner, you know, target civilian, target civilian. You know, it goes over all the different ones and just, and all of them just fall over at once. And the civilians are like, wow, you know, love that. Excellent. And I love the Robocop nod with the guy, you know, staying there back against the wall and then, you know, dragging him back, you know, excellent. And he's all yours, flying away, you know, awesome. I like the, you know, scene with the jet well enough, although that is sort of a scene that, you know, I, don't know, I guess they, they wanted a big, you know, a good action scene in there, and so it, I guess it does fit with the character that Tony wouldn't just admit, you know, that's me, don't shoot, you know, but, yeah, he does have to go. I, I do like that he saves the pilot, you know, with the shoot, but it is, you know... Actually, everything good Tony does in this movie is just fixing his own mistakes, you know, and that actually also somewhat a problem with the second one. I Actually, I guess the Avengers film will help that, because, you know, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it, the trailers give away, you know, Loki appears to be the bad guy, so, you know, unless he has deals with, you know, the outer space god creatures, you know, it actually will be him doing something heroic for once. Now, there was something else. I like that, you know, the, just the, the continuing sort of tension between Tony and Pepper Potts, you know the, you know, that, that night where they dance, and then he goes down there for drinks, and the reporter, you know, has him go away, and then, you know, later when they talk about it, she points out, you left me there by myself, and he's like, oh, uh, yeah, that night, oops, you know, it, yeah, that, that was really good. I suppose that does pretty well cover it. Oh, I love when, you know, Obadiah is talking to Tony and about the, you know, the, how he made a suit as well. And he's like, my designs aren't quite as, well, conservative as yours. And you're just like, this guy doesn't care if he kills people. He made, and then you see the actual suit. And he's like, well, Miss Potts, you're no longer useful to us. And, you know, he's got the Gatling gun. And that's excellent because... A Gatling gun, you know, I mean, if it had just been a machine gun, you'd have been like, why doesn't he shoot her in time? Ah, oh, come on, you know, I mean, not because we wanted her to die, but just because, you know, why didn't it fire? But a Gatling gun, you know, you, you can have that thing of, you know, it, it winds up, you know, it has to get going before it starts firing. And then suddenly he's there, and it starts firing, and it almost hits Tony. Actually, it might hit Tony, but yeah, you know, it doesn't hit her, you know, that was excellent. And, you know, I love the post credit scene. Again, I'm sorry, the best setup for a, you know, for the Avengers movie. I, just excellent, you know, the, I am Iron Man. You think you're the only superhero in the world? I like to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative, and just, you know, th those moments where you just, you like, you hear the voice. Because at that point, we didn't know, you know, I mean, sure, we'd have read the, the comics, you know, we had read Ultimate Marvel, you know, we knew that Ultimate Nick Fury was freaking, you know, Sam Jackson, you know. 
And literally, I mean, that is, you know, they called him up, they said, we want to make a cartoon, you know, we want to make a comic book character here. We want to model it after you, is that okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, in a word, yes, you know, because he's a big comic fan. And so they do the movie, and, you know, it's like, please have him. If you're gonna have Ultimate Nick Fury, I mean, they could do the White Nick Fury, but... That didn't work out so well last time they tried it, so I, I, yeah, I think, you know, maybe in a generation or two, when people have forgotten, you could try that again, but for now, let's go with Ultimate Nick Fury, you know. It's just, it's it's sort of obvious to actually cast him, and it's it's the good kind of obvious. It's the, you know, yes, you did that kind of obvious, you know, and you just, you hear the voice, and you, you can sort of tell, that, that's a black guy, isn't it, you know, and, and just... You kind of get the sense, and you're like, no, no, they didn't get, they did they got him, you know, he steps out of the shadow, you know, again, excellent introduction, you know, and just, had the eye patch, and the, the leather jet, just the whole thing, it's just awesome, you know, I, yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers this movie, so if there's anything I didn't cover, just, you know, put it down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.